Hey guys, just a couple of hours ago, the new data sheets for all the Space Marine units that are a part of the big Space Marine family, apart from the uh, guys that don't honor the Codex Astartes that much, have been released. So we will not see Grey Knights, Dark Angels, Blood Angels stuff here, but we will see everything else that is that belongs to Space Marines. So without further ado, let's partake in this wonderful adventure of looking at all these Space Marines data sheets and all the changes that we can find. And I highly recommend to take some refreshments because this video is going to be a very, very long one. Feel free to skip some parts that you are not interested in. First, the primary is Captain. So we've seen this guy, a guy in the Warhammer, Warhammer community. His uh, standard data sheet is uh, movement 64, 3 plus save, 5 wounds, unfortunately, so primaries don't get an extra wound. So there's really not much of a difference between primaries now and the regular dudes. So the, uh, just, they just get a nicer model, nicer looking armor suit, that's it. Uh, the primaries project has failed uh, in the Games Workshop office because they really wanted to make us uh, change all our models to uh, primaries guys, but then uh, it turns out that no one wants to buy extra thousands of dollars worth of uh, models, so they decided to come back to their original plan and just have everyone play roughly the same. Uh, so primaries captain also is OPSEC 1, which is nice for all the characters, it's the same. Pretty much uh, rights of battle, it's every captain that gets this ability, and it's the same for everyone. Once per battle round, one unit from your army can be a uh, with this ability can be targeted by a stratagem for one for zero command point even if another unit from the army has already been targeted by the stratagem this phase uh, and uh, i think that means that you can use a stratagem for a unit that this captain needs uh for free which is if that it's how it works that's very nice the relic shield the bear has a wounds characteristic of six so shields are now not that interesting uh and his stats over here are pretty predictable just one less AP on the power weapons. Attacks are the same as they were. Plasma is roughly the same. Bolt rifle the same. Uh, so nothing too interesting in there. And Finest Tower is a nice ability allowing you to get extra three attacks and Devastating Wounds ability, which is strong, uh, once per battle. So whenever the captain needs to show off how cool he is, he can uh, add a bunch of attacks to his profile and show everyone who is the boss. And uh, he can join Assault Intercessor Squad, Blade Guard Veteran Squad, but only if you have a shield, which is annoying. A Hellblaster Squad, only if you have a Plasma Pistol. Inferno Squad, Intercessor Squad, and Stern Gun Veteran Squad. And, uh, okay, not bad. Uh, Gravis Captain, he's cool. Uh, he has extra wound. He has 3 plus save, which is annoying. I would love him to have 2 plus save. But he has 4 plus invulnerable save anyway, like all the captains. And um, he has refused to yield, which is half damage characteristic of the attack that is allocated to him. That is powerful. Because uh, it means that it will take much, much more to kill him, especially now in this edition where damage is reused. So damage 3 is much less often and especially like damage 4, damage D3 plus 3 is even less popular, uh, less prominent. So we, this guy will survive much more attacks and I'm glad because I have a Gravis Captain model which I've never used in game so maybe, maybe now I will be able to. Uh, his power fists, power th weapons profiles, you can see nothing too spectacular here. Um, they basically baked in this uh, model, which is the Gravis Captain uh, model, the uh, the guy with the chain sword, which you can swap, I think, into a sh power sword and the power fist. And the original Gravis Captain that came out uh, with the 8th edition starter. So uh, now all these two guys are inside of one data sheet. And, and the, this guy has like a Chain sword and fist. That guy had power sword and chain fist. Uh, power sword and power fist. So that's the captain in Gravis armor. Very good. And he can join, obviously, the Gravis squad. So aggressors, eradicators, heavy intercessors, and uh, that is, that is it. Captain Phobus armor. He is master of deceit, so he can uh, redeploy up to three uh, units of Phobos, Scouts, Scout Sniper Squads, and also put them into Strategic Reserves for free, even regardless of how many units are already in Strategic Reserves. Redeploying is often very nice and powerful, however, redeploying only the Scout unit is not that impressive. However, from a tactical standpoint, all redeploys are essential for your 
game strategy. So I cannot say that this is a bad ability. He has stealth and infiltrators, so minus one to hit, and he can uh, deploy further up the board. And uh, combat knife. No AP on that, that's a shame. I think that Combat Knives should have AP1, uh, in my humble opinion. Uh, that would probably make them on the same level as Chainsword, which is not the true, I guess, but th that's probably why they don't give them AP. Um, so, Instigator Bolt Carbine Precision, so he can target characters inside squads, uh, leaders of the squads. Uh, 2 plus Ballistic Skill, 4 Strength, 4 AP, uh, 2 Damage 2, so 1 shot. Nothing too spectacular about this guy. Rights of Battle, the same ability. 3 plus safe, 5 wounds, so he's essentially the same stats as the first primary captain we looked at. Next, uh, sorry, next. Uh, the, uh, he can join Eliminator Squad, Incursion, Infiltrators, Reaver, Scouts. So all the Scout guys can have this guy's help. I'm not sure he's going to be much of a help to them, but... Uh, he can join them. Captain Terminator armor, we've already seen that on Warhammer Community. He has uh, base wounds characteristic of 6. He's T5, so the captain in Gravis is T6. He's T5, which is strong. Uh, you can reroll charge rolls made for this model, uh, the Imperium Sword ability. He has Deep Strike, he can take the shield, which gives him extra wound. Uh, 4 plus invulnerable save, obviously, and uh, he can take the auxiliary grenade launcher so he has so he would have the grenade keyword uh, all the weapons are the same so thunder hammer devastating wounds strength eight minus two two and five attacks with hitting on threes chain fist so everything here is the same as everyone else his combi weapon is that weird strange profile which is uh anti infantry four plus devastating wounds rapid fire one so they we don't see here anything like multi melters plasmas on the other side of the bolter so yeah, that one is probably a bit sad. Uh, he can join Relic Terminator squads, Terminator Assault squads, and Terminator squads. Okay, uh, nothing too exciting about that. Good captain. Next. Captain in regular armor, same stats as the Primaris one. Does have Primaris keyword, which as far as I understand now doesn't do anything for, for as of yet. Uh, his Inferno pistol, which is interesting, is damage D3. So um, he would only get the regular like big damage if uh, he's within half of the uh, range which is three inches which obviously you can do with the pistol but still uh, a bit annoying for, especially for like the uh, sanguinary guard I think they can have that no uh, the the death company of course um, they have the flamer graph pistol graph pistol is nice Anti-Vehicle 2 Plus. Okay, so we might expect to see that on the graph cans. And if it's so, graph cans are very good against vehicles then. Uh, with all the toughnesses going up, wounding on twos is just crazy. Uh, the uh, finest hour, the same as the previous captain. Moving on. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Moving on. He can join Assault Squad, Command Squad, Tactical Squad, and Vanguard Veteran Squad. Okay, not bad. Finest hour. Considering that he fights just as well as the Primaris guy, it's a strong option for once per game fighting. Captain with a jump pack, nothing too exciting here. We see everything that we expected to. Only the Angels of Angel's Wrath is nice. A plus one strength on the charge for the squad that he leads. That can be powerful for something like Lightning Claws on the Vanguard Vats. Maybe the Thunder Hammers, if they have when they have them so that get, they get to that strength nine which is important for some vehicles and monsters in the game so not a bad ability captain on the bike he has swift assault so the unit that he leads gets uh to have assault ability on the ranged attacks uh shield also gives him seven wounds he was also t5 so he's the same toughness as the terminator one and uh 12 wound, 12 inch move Interestingly enough, he does not get the turbo boost. So this ability seems to have seems to be gone from the uh, from the biker cab characters. I wonder if the chaplain on the bike has that. Probably not. I would assume that he doesn't. Uh, the relic shield also gives him an extra wound. That shield thing I don't like because. Um, Taking the shield, I don't know how what the prices are. So if the shield doesn't cost that much, like extra couple of points, maybe. But other than that, you're always, almost always better off just taking an extra weapon. 
maybe with this particular guy, it's it, it can be useful because uh, six and seven wounds is, a, is an interesting break because you're not getting killed by three shots damage two. So you might want to go for the shield in case of a character which already has six wounds. But the characters that have five wounds, like the captains, I would not recommend going for the shield. Sorry. Uh, yes, now the captain can join bike squads and outrider squads. Nice, interesting. That <laughs> feels so weird. Characters joining the squads. Uh, feels like I'm back playing Dawn of War. Uh, Primaris Lieutenant. Uh, we've already seen this guy. Storm Shield still gives him 4 plus invulnerable save. The, um, he has 4 wounds, which is awful, <laughs> in my opinion. Especially considering how dangerous everything is in Warhammer, even still. Even, even still when lethality went down, as they promise. Uh, but still, uh, this unit can uh, is eligible, eligible to shoot and charge in eternity, which fall, it fell back. So if he joins the squad, that unit can fall back and shoot and charge. That's strong. And uh, also the unit that he leads gets lethal hits ability. So he, they automatically wound on sixes. Uh, and that's strong. That's definitely no, nothing to sniff at. So anything like Blade Guard veterans with this guy at their side so he can join blade guard veteran squad <laughs> and funnily enough he doesn't have to have the shield uh, to join them and he can also join them together with one captain uh, and i like it so uh, maybe a nice blade guard veteran squad that has a captain and the blade guard sorry and the lieutenant is a nice option a uh, reaver lieutenant i'm uh, not sure there's anything spectacular about him i've already looked through these data sheets before we started the video so i have some insight uh the Combat knife AP zero. He's awful in combat. He won't kill anything, uh, in my humble opinion. The mastercraft special issue bolt pistol for such a long and uh, intricate name, nothing spectacular. Uh, tactical precision ability. While this unit model is leading a unit, weapons equipped by models in that unit have the lethal hits ability. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's a good ability, the same as every lieutenant has. And deadly terror. While this model is leading a unit, increase the range of the unit's terror troops ability by three inches. That's probably like minus one leadership that Reavers give out. Um, that's nice, but he and he can only join Reavers. Uh, unless this guy costs very, very little in points, or Reavers are just crazy badass, the most cool units you can imagine. I'm not sure anyone would want to take him. Uh, Lieutenant in Phobos armor, he has the... Um, and he, that guy has scouts 6-inch, so he can pre-game 6-inch move um, with the, with his squad. And this guy also has scouts 6, but he also has infiltrators, so he can do either of these. Uh, so he can deploy, forward deploy, or scouts, 6-inch uh, scout move. And also the transport that this unit is inside of can also move up to six inches, uh, which is great. That's that's a nice workaround. The fact that these guys can start in transports. Next, uh, let's go and take a look at what he can join: incursors, infiltrators, reavers. So only the shooter guys, and his shoot and fade ability, which is shoot and scoot essentially what we call in the industry so uh, if you're not within engagement range after you shoot in the shooting phase you can make a normal move of up to d6 inches that's very powerful however unfortunately he can only join the squads that don't do much in shooting and combat unless uh, it's something drastically changed within curses or ears which i don't think so so uh, let's look at them later tactical uh, lieutenant tactical precision target priority the same things as the primaris one not gonna waste time on this guy nothing too major in his ranged or melee weapons as well uh, next he can join assault squad command squad tactical squad essentially the same stuff as the captain can join primaris librarian that's interesting so smite which fire will focus which fire and uh when this model is leading the unit, models in this in that unit have a four plus invulnerable ability. Hmm, four plus invulnerable save from the librarian. That's strong. Okay, what he can he join? He can join assault intercessors, desolation squad, hellblasters. Okay, furnace squad, intercessors, string and veteran squad. Okay. Mm hmm. So four plus invulnerable save and four plus feel no pain from psychic attacks. So he gives a lot of survivability to them and also can dish out a smite every turn unfortunately he can only join the squad that doesn't have any characters inside already so that's annoying but still having a four plus invulnerable save for something like 
maybe a forward to running the salt intercessor squads again depending on the price because the salt intercessors by themselves don't do that much so wasting uh, efforts points on protecting them i'm not sure that's that's important but that's interesting i like it uh, in general i like the concept uh the librarian phobos armor does the same thing with full full no pain four plus for his unit against psychic attacks ability and he also has shrouding so while this model is leading the unit they have stealth ability and that unit cannot be targeted by range attacks unless the attacking new model is within 12. Uh, I guess he can only join, yeah, he can only join the Phobos and stealthy guys, so nothing that can shoot that much, that well, because otherwise it would be a very big problem for your opponent if you can only shoot uh, a, a dangerous shooting squad if you're within 12. That would be too much. So, uh, nice low Phobos Librarian, four wounds on both of them, so cool. Uh, Librarian Terminator Arm, we've already seen that one, so he c gives a sustained hits ability to his squad. Uh, the same Psychic Hood ability, and uh, obviously has an extra wound, 2 plus save, T5. Not bad. He can join uh, Relic Terminators, Terminators, and Terminator Squad. Terminator Assault Squad and Regular Terminator Squad. Okay. A regular term, a leg regular Librarian, sorry. Mental Fortress, uh, same ability. He has all the nice war gear that you can take for the librarians for the captains firstborn captains and everyone else uh, force weapons have been moved into one choice so no more staff uh, sword axe you get just force weapon i like it that simplifies things uh, the same as they did with Grey Knights. He can join the same squads as the Captain can. Primaris Chaplain, that's interesting. What do Chaplains do? A Litany of Hate. While this model is leading a unit, each time a model in that unit makes a melee attack, add one to the wound roll. Okay, so it's uh, essentially the previous iteration of Excitation of Rage. Uh, and Spiritual Leader, once per battle at the start of any phase, you can select one of friendly at the start of unit. Uh, that is Battle Shocked. And within 12 of him, and he is no longer Battle Shocked. That's strong. Uh, not sure that this would be the same as the previous reincarnation of the chaplains because they used to have, they used to give a small leadership buff, which is obviously weaker than this one because they used to give leadership nine to units around them, and uh, that was not ma something massive. However, they did give an aura of reroll fits, an aura of plus two to charge and plus three to pylons and consolidations. Uh, as one of the options and also you could if you wanted to you could swap one of these into the exhortation of rage so plus one to hit uh in melee now you just get the plus one to hit and also it seems that yeah he can join a bunch of squads but he can be only the one character that joins the squad um okay not not n not too much stacking going on of uh buffs at this moment in time it seems so you can you're very limited in terms of what you can do a recitation of focus for the chaplain terminator armor so while this model is leading a the unit they have full plus final pain against mortal wounds not psychic attacks but mortal wounds okay that's strong uh and the same flitting of hate ability oath of moment cruises arcanum is uh five attacks two plus two hits six minus one damage two and uh he can join terminator squads okay uh, Chaplain Bike, that's interesting. So he has Catechism Fire. <laughs> wow. Uh, he's buffing the shooting. So it seems. Uh, each time this model unit is selected to shoot, you can select one of the unit within 12 and visible to this model. Until the end of the phase, range weapons equipped by models in this model's unit have the devastating one's ability, but only against one of the unit within 12. Uh, hmm. Not sure. So no pluses to the charge rolls as of yet, we see. Uh, and he is T5, five wounds only. <laughs> oh, that's cute. And he, as you can see, with the, that's the chaplain on bike, so no primary chaplain on bike anymore. Just just a chaplain on bike. And he doesn't even have the primary keyboard, even though they're definitely using the primary model as the, uh, as the big image. Okay, uh, Chaplain on bike uh, can join bike squads and outrider squads. <laughs> so nothing too exciting for him, unfortunately. Now, a regular Chaplain uh, once per battle, so the same as the uh, basic guy for wounds. Okay, nothing exciting about him. Chaplain with jump pack, uh, exhortation of rage each time this model unit is selected to fight. You can select one immediately within the engagement range and roll 1d6 on a 
to fight that union suffers. Okay, so he does some mortal wounds and the same plus one to wound ability. He can join Vanguard Vets with jump axe and assault squad with jump axe. Primaris Tech Marine. Okay, so this guy still is Primaris uh, because the models look too different the primaris one and the firstborn one uh so he has three abilities uh he the, he's a tech marine so while this model is within three inches of one or more friendly vehicle units he has the lone operative ability which is as far as i remember the ability that says you cannot target this guy unless you're within 12. okay not bad uh blessing of the omnisci in your command phase you can select one friendly adeptus status vehicle model within three inches of this model this model regains up to d3 lost wounds and until the end of the next command phase each time that vehicle makes an attack advance the hit roll. so they've baked the uh awaken the machine spirit and the blessing of the omnisai into one ability okay not not bad uh vengeance of the omnisai if a friendly adeptus starts vehicle is destroyed until the end of the battle this model's omnisai power x has an attack characteristic of seven wow <laughs> i like it that's uh very fluffy he's very angry that someone destroyed a machine uh, and uh, Graph Pistol, Anti-Vehicle 2+, plus, Forge Bolter is the same. Yeah, literally the same stat line as it was in the 9th edition. Uh, server Arm is uh, 8 minus 2 damage 3, 1 attack. And Omnisap Power X is 6 minus 2 damage 2. And they decided to just ignore the Mecha Dendrites that this guy used to have. Uh, as an additional um, attack profile. Uh, he can join Assault Intercessors, start his Servitors and Intercessor Squad, and he does not seems to be... Yeah, he doesn't give anything to to the squad that he leads. At least, yeah, he doesn't. Okay. Tech Marine. Uh, he has the same things, and he can join almost the same stuff. So, start his Servitors and Tactical Squad instead of Assault Intercessors and Intercessors. I started servitors. They are mind locked to the tech marine, so he raises their ballistic skill and weapon skill. Uh, their T4 for plus save one wound and obsec zero. Okay, so they cannot control objectives. And I get it, they're mindless, so why would they? Uh, intercessors. Okay, uh, they are very much similar. Three plus save, two wounds. T4. They have objective secure rules, so if you control an objective marker at the end of your command phase, it remains under your control. Okay, sticky objectives rule. Uh, if you move from the objective market, it's still yours. Cool. They have bolt rifles, which are assault and heavy. Four minus one, one. So the, well, as we've seen on the Warhammer community, nothing exciting. A starter's chain swords can be given to the sergeant. That's why the starter's chain sword uh, has five attacks because it kind of implies that sergeant has one extra attack. Uh, and uh, that's it. Nothing interesting about them. Inferno Squad is OPSEC 1, so they're not that aligned. Yeah, these guys are about aligned. The Infernus are not, and they have the Purge the Foe uh, ability, so whenever an infantry unit is hit by one or more attacks, they have to take a better shock test. That's good. Fire Blasters ignore cover, they automatically hit. D6 shots 501, uh, five, Strength 5, AP 0, Damage 1. Mm, okay, they are not bad. They definitely they are nice, but they need some buffs from uh, characters uh, joining them. So like a lieutenant, maybe, and a captain to give them AP, to give them lethal hits, to work through the lack of uh, stat line in their power blasters, in my opinion. Assault intercessors, that's what I want to see. A shock assault, each time model in this unit targets an enemy unit with a melee attack, real, wound, real wound rolls of one, and if you are within... If that unit, enemy unit you're targeting, is within range of objective marking, you can reroll the wound roll instead. That's powerful. That's really, really good. I'm happy for our favorite assault intercessors. They used to be the best troops in 9th edition, and they seem to be very good now still. Uh, Starter's Chain Swords give them 4 attacks each, so considering they will be wounding most non vehicle things on 5s uh, and with full, full rerolls, that's very good. Thunderhammer. Okay, so the assault, the assault intercessor sergeant can get the thunder hammer, plasma pistol, hand flamer. Okay. <laughs> Nothing else interesting about them. It seems move is still six. Yeah. Uh, okay, librarian with a jump axe. Weirdly, we have this guy here. Uh, Might of heroes he has. Uh, so while this model is leading a unit, improve the armor penetration characteristic of melee weapons equipped by models in the unit by one. 
Okay, so you can exchange the invulnerable save uh, into the extra extra AP. Uh, that's what I was afraid of before the 10th edition started, that Games Workshop, will, Games Workshop will actually give us an incentive to buy all the models, because it depends on what unit you need to buff up, if you need to have a librarian with a jump pack, a primaris librarian, terminator librarian, so now instead of having just one librarian, you, you need to have a bunch of them. Uh, that's very good for their business, but maybe not so good for us collectors. A lieutenant uh, with combi weapon. So that's the guy we've seen. Priority objective fight, uh, we've seen before in the uh, in the Warhammer community articles. So he has paired combo blades, which are anti tyranids 4 plus. So he's the anti tyranid expert, uh, like a death watch uh, almost lieutenant. He has film paint for 5 plus ability, uh, lone operative, infiltrators, and stealth ability. So his ability is essentially you're marking an objective and that objective becomes the priority objective and each time until the end of the battle and the episode starts within six of this guy targets that enemy model on the priority objective he, they can reroll one roll one so it's it's a twist on the old lieutenant ability where only if the enemy unit is within six of that priority objective sorry is on that priority objective they would uh be uh, the, your units would be reroll once to one against that unit Interesting. Uh, that's an interesting throwback to the old edition. Once per turn, when enemy unit ends a normal move, advance or fallback move within nine of this unit, uh, it can make a normal move, so he's running away if he wants to. Let's move on. He cannot join anyone because he doesn't have the leader, leader ability, so he's like a literally a lone operative. Uh, I wish he had better melee weapons because that just that's pathetic. <laughs> Five attacks, strength four, AP zero, damage one. All these sustained hits and anti turnings four plus, that's that's not impressive. Uh, you need damage, you need AP, you need strength to be effective. Uh, heavy intercessors, unyielding the face of the foe, so the previous 10th, 9th edition stratagem is now a, uh, basically an ability, and each time a damage characteristic of one attack is allocated to model in this unit, add one to the armor saving throw made against that attack. So AP, uh, AP1 attacks, uh, AP0 attacks are not good against these guys if it, they are damage 1, which is understandable. They are T6, 3 wounds each, 5 wound, five inch move, and uh, their heavy bolt rifle are assault heavy, 2 shots each, 30 inches of range, 5 minus 1, 1, heavy bolter is the same, well it's assault and heavy, so you can do both with this thing and uh, you do suffer the minus one to hit for the heaviness of the bolter uh, okay not bad we want to see i want to see the prices for these guys but they are okay for now and they can be up to 10 men's squ uh, squad size infiltrators omni scrambles enemy units that are set up on the battlefield as reinforcements cannot be set up within 12 of this unit so the same very same ability as it was before still very strong especially considering armies like Grey Knights and uh, Gene Stiller Colts and all others, I, that's powerful. They are OPSEC 1, which I find interesting, and they're not battle line. Hmm, cool, okay. Uh, so heavy intercessors are, infiltrators are not. Um, what they also have is close combat weapons, which is nothing to write home about. Infiltrator's ability, obviously they're infiltrators, so they should have that. Uh, Helix Gauntlet models in this Iberus unit have film play in 6 plus. Okay, uh, the Helix Gauntlet is one ability that is being changed all the time. Every From one edition to another, it's always changing. Uh, it, will, it used to be uh, reviving models uh, as an apothecary, now uh, then it was uh, just ignoring the first wound that comes through, and now it's 6 plus film of pain. I like the 6 plus film of pain probably better than any of the rest ones. Infiltrator comes array. Each time you target this bearer's, the bearer's unit with a stratagem, roll 1d6 on 4, 5 plus, you gain 1 CP. Um, okay, how often would you target infiltrators with a stratagem, though? That's the question. Uh, but you can equip them with Helix Gauntlet and the infiltrators com comes array, so you don't have to have one over the other. That's nice. Uh, incursors, so they get scout's ability instead of the infiltrator's ability. Uh, the multi-spectrum rays in your shooting phase after this unit has shot select one enemy unit that was hit by one or more attacks made by this unit this phase. Until the end of the phase, each time a friendly adeptus starts unit makes an attack, plus one to hit. So 
they're essentially marking out the target for you like towel market lights and then you get plus one to hit for that that is powerful uh, any pluses to hit are great especially when your entire army gets that uh and uh yeah cool uh the only limitation is that you need to hit the unit with your attacks which you have bolt oculus bolt carabines uh, two shots each so a five man squad will get 10 shots they are assault ignore cover nothing too spectacular about them and their hay haywire haywire mine is once per battle the start of any phase you can select one and within three and roll one d6 on two plus they suffer d3 or two d3 if they're a vehicle so similar rule to what it was uh incursor squads up to 10 guys okay tactical squads tactical flexibility can shoot declare a charge in the turn which with which they fell back uh, and they're also battle line i like it i like it a lot that's nice what to, in terms of their um a bit of war gear so the one bolt gun can be replaced with the one of the following so this all the special weapons and the heavy weapons one can be replaced with only the special weapons okay so you can take either two specials one heavy sorry one heavy one special or two specials uh in your squad and the sergeant can get all his things like the melee weapons with him uh they are object two okay i like them as well scout squads they're not battle line uh, they are infiltrators and scouts, so you can select what you want. Guerrilla tactics at the end of your opponent's turn, if this unit is more than 6 inches away from all enemy models, you can remove that unit from battlefield and place it into strategic reserves. Okay, that's powerful, uh, because you can redeploy every turn, essentially. That It's not limited to once per game, something. A starry shotgun uh, for more, okay, nothing spectacular. Um, mm -hmm. Obsec one, two wounds each, four plus safe. So they get two wounds now, and they were one wound each in the previous edition. That face is just horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how you look when you're when you are coming to the fight against Tyranids without the full armor suit. That's how you would look. Uh, scout squad. Uh, yeah, that's it. Scout Sniper Squad, they are a separate unit now. So they get a stealth ability, they get concealed positions, so this unit can only be selected as a target of range attack if the attacking model is within 12. That's strong. Uh, if you get like 10 guys, wow, that's strong. Because if you get 10 guys and they would be hitting on 3s, even on 2s if you are stationary with their sniper rifles, 4-2-2, four, four two, two, and... Uh, find someone who can give them lethal hits mm, that can be good actually they can be quite nice quite powerful uh, i think you can join a, a lieutenant with these guys so 10 shots hitting on twos uh every six is an automatic hit minus two damage two and mm, almost nothing can shoot them back because uh, they would have to go through all your almost your entire army to get to them uh that is powerful and how many missile launchers one missile launcher you can take okay not too spectacular but you can also split that squad into two so you, you not split but you can take two squads of five for example and have two missile launchers uh and uh, all the other sniper rifles okay that's strong uh primaris company champion finally this guy has left legend so he can <laughs> he can be an actual unit uh he is uh four wounds three plus save t4 Opsic one uh, he's mastercrafted power up and has precision so he can actually target a character inside a squad and when he fights uh, five attacks five minus two two so regular mastercrafted power weapon ability power weapon stat line uh, honor or death while this model is leading the unit at one to advance the charge rolls okay so that's the first pluses to the charge rolls we've seen so far and you can target that unit with a heroic intervention stratagem for zero command points even if you have already used the stratagem on a different unit this phase and martial superiority against the characters he can reroll hits and wounds okay so not bad i like the fact that he gives at least uh, the pluses to advance and charge rolls uh and uh, unfortunately he cannot be joined with a squad along with someone else that's annoying a bit primary apothecary what does this guy do so same stat line as all the minor characters. Uh, the Nathesium is while this model is leading a unit in the command phase, you can return one destroyed model. Okay, uh, good. Nothing I can say about that else. That's a good ability. Gene State Recovery, one, uh, when this model's bodyguard unit is destroyed, roll 1d6 on 2 plus, you gain 1 CP. <laughs> okay. So you get a little kickback, cashback when uh, your uh, squad is, is dead around this guy. 
and uh, absorber bolt pistol, the reductor pistol, you get the two pistols. Uh, you still don't get any close combat weapons on this guy, even though I think his chain, his saw that he cuts up the guys with, or this backpack thing can be used as a, as a weapon, but still not yet. Oh, and he can actually join the squad. Uh, he can attach this model to one of the above units, even if one captain or lieutenant model has already been attached to it. Okay, so you can have captain and lieutenant or like this guy and lieutenant with the squad. Nice. Okay, interesting. Uh, that's at least something. Uh, the biologist, so the new model from the uh, Leviathan box, ha gives uh, unit lethal hits ability. That's strong. And also, if this model's unit destroys enemy unit, this model is uh, OPSEC 9, so your unit will be just crazy good at holding objectives. And uh, he can also join a squad along with someone else, but only one captain and chapter master, not the lieutenant, uh, because his lethal hits ability is the same as the one that lieutenant gives. Uh, the primary is ancient, also a leader. I suspect that, yes, he can also join a squad along with the captain and lieutenant, so you ha can have two leaders, essentially. Uh, in the squad, and he gives add one to the upset characteristic of models. Nice, that's strong. Uh, he has power weapon minus five minus two one, uh, and the, 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 the unbreakable duty while this model is within the range of an objective or within six inches of the center of the battlefield. That model has fill the paint four plus ability. Wow, <laughs> that's cool. Uh, it only is for him uh, though, so not that I impressive, but at least that's some reason to take this guy and OPSEC is obviously important. Blade Guard Ancient, uh, he can only join Blade Guard Veteran squads, yes, and uh, he also can join s units in addition to the captain and lieutenant, um, or lieutenant, sorry. And Astarius Banner is the same, plus one to OPSEC. Deeds of Heroism, once per battle, when, when this model is selected to fight, you can it can use this ability. If it does until the end of the phase, add one to the attacks characteristics of melee weapons equipped by models in this model's unit. That's strong, uh, especially if this guy is not that expensive. I'm not sure that is worth the swap for like Lieutenant, which gives lethal hits and the ability to fall back and charge and shoot, but we'll see. Uh, judging by the price. Ancient in Terminator armor. Uh, obviously one extra wound, plus one save, all that jazz. Uh, Terminator Storm Shield has wounds characteristic of six. Uh, and um, <laughs> keeping the banner high, keep the banner high. While this model is leading a unit each time a model in that unit makes an attack, add one to the hit roll if that unit is below its starting strength and add one to the wound roll as well if that unit is below half strength. Okay, so if something is dead in the unit that he leads, yeah, they get plus one to hit. If something is dead very much and you've lost half of your squad, you get plus one to wound. That's strong, uh, especially the first part because losing just one model is easy. Uh, so getting plus one to hit, that is nice. In addition to the Astartes banner, though he can only join Terminator. So, hmm. okay. Interesting, interesting. So the previous, like the biologist guy cannot join the, he can only join the Gravis guys which is limiting it somewhat. And this guy cannot join Terminators as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are limited. Terminators can only join Terminators, it seems. Uh, Blade Guard Veterans. Okay, finally, my favorite unit of the entire uh, Space Marine Codex as of yet, because I really like their design and their idea. Uh, they are three ones each. Cool. So even though they don't get two plus save anymore, but it seems to be a common thing. Nowadays, only the really, really heavy armor suits get two plus save. Toughness 4, OPSEC 1, uh, Master Crafted Power Weapon, 4 attacks each, so just as they were before, but no penalty for not charging. Uh, 5 minus 2 damage too, so like all the Master Crafted Power Weapons, uh, the Neo Volkite pistol can be given to the sergeant, I presume. Yes, and uh, it can be up to sorry, it can be up to a six man squad. And what is their blade ability? At the start of the fight phase, you can select one of the following abilities. They either reroll hit rolls of one, or each time you make a saving throw for them, you reroll saves of one. Uh, that's strong. I like it. Uh, it's not as strong as the Brotherhood uh, guys, the Bla Black Templars um, unit, the Sword Brethren, which get plus one to their damage characteristic which is crazy. I would much prefer the reroll uh, having the ability to increase my damage by one instead of the reroll of ones uh, on the saves or the hits. But still not bad, especially if they don't, if you're not that expensive. Uh, command squad. Command squad. What is this 
monstrosity. It's uh, one apothecary, one company ancient, one company champion, and two company veterans. Okay, so it's the amalgamation of all these small veterans in the in the army. So they are essentially uh, an, an amalgamation of everything that the veterans we've, we've looked at before can do. So Narthesium can revive can revive a guy from the squad when he dies. Uh, Banner Banner gives obsec two to the entire unit, and the unit con consists of apothecary, ancient champion, and two veterans. So. Um, what is five models? Uh, while the small um, unit contains a company champion and one to the advance and charge rolls, and they can also be selected for the heroic intervention strategy for zero command points. Okay, uh, they don't have the character keyword, which is interesting, and I don't know why it says here that oh, while this unit contains an apothecary, you can revive one destroyed model, excluding character models. I'm not sure they we have character models here. Even though Apothecary is hmm, interesting. It seems like a quirk of the rules. Okay, so let's move on. I like this idea uh, of uh, unifying the combat's command squad into one thing. And the fact that you can take like multi on the on the company champions. But how long will they survive? That is the question. Because they are not protected by anything. They're just a unit. And they also can take study shields. Uh, next, Vanguard Veteran Squad, uh, the guys without the jump packs. Heirloom weapon, cool. <laughs> so the melee weapons are essentially all baked into one profile, right? Yeah. Okay, so they don't have lightning gloves anymore. Mm, that's strange. Uh, they have scout, uh, six inch scout move, so they can pre move six inches before the game. And each time they end the charge move until the end of the turn, their melee weapons are lethal. Uh, so not bad, but the fact that they don't get the access to thunder hammers and uh, um, lightning claws and all that stuff is kind of annoying. Yeah, any number of web uh, of models can have their bolt pistol changed to storm shield or the stuff. Obviously, you're probably gonna run storm shield. Scout's six inch move is nice. I like it. Uh, I do not like the fact that we are not getting any flexibility with our weapons whatsoever. Uh, Vanguard veterans with jump packs, the same thing. Okay, so heirloom weapons, five minus one, one. Storm shield, Vanguard assault. Each time this unit ends the charge move until the end of the turn, lethal hits. Same thing. Uh, a 12 inch move, upsec one. Okay, <laughs> five minus one one is not that impressive of a stat line. I hope the price is going to reflect the fact that we are not getting any thunder hammers, any power swords, real power swords, anything else. Okay, interesting. Um, let's move on. Stronger veterans. We've already seen these guys. Bolter drill. So they're the bolter bolter weapon experts. So their bolters are all devastating. Uh, the regular one is assault heavy rapid fire one. So you would get three shots when you're in half range, uh, and uh, ballistic skill three plus strength four AP one damage one. Heavy bolter is slightly cooler. The one they they have bolter drill in the shooting phase after the unit is shot. If it would dis if destroyed a unit, you can shoot again. Okay, so you are incentivized to shoot at weaker units to have a chance to double shoot at something. Uh, this guy has like a multi melter thingy, which is combi weapon, but it's not melta in any way. I don't like this change because uh, we used to have the ability to have portable melters in our with our space marines. Now we only get some weird and I infantry four plus thing. Judy's here. Okay, uh, this guy has the Temper Mortis, so while this model is leading a unit, that unit has the fight's first ability, that's extremely powerful because it allows you to fight before your unit, your attacking your, your enemy uh, can fight who charged you. So that's like a, a, one of the best things that can save you from charge. Um, each time this model destroys an enemy enemy character, add one to the attack characteristic of its executioner blade. So he gets five attacks, strength seven, AP two, damage two. Absolver bolt pistol. I really like the temporal mortis now, uh, and he can join Blade Guard Veteran Squad. Unfortunately, he can only join one. So he can on, on be the only one who joins the squad, uh, and that's annoying because we like the lethal hits from lieutenants. We like the free strats from Captain and so on. Reavers, they were awful in the previous edition. <laughs> Let's see what they are now. 
Okay, they still don't get anything nice in terms of fire, their fighting potential. Um, their special issue bolt pistols are cool. Scout 6 inch move. Okay, fearsome assault. At the start of the fight phase, each time an enemy unit with an engagement range of each time each enemy unit with an engagement range of one or more units with this ability must take a battle shock tax. That's strong because it means that in the fight phase you have a high chance, high ish, is considering that you subtract one from the test because the terror troops ability, highest chance of failing the test, and it means that your opponent will not get to control objectives and uh, to use stratagems. That's strategy. That's strong and I like it. River Graph Shoot, they have Deep Strike, Grapnel Launcher can ignore any vertical distance. So the same as it was in the previous edition. Reavers are still not that great, but the Battleshock interaction is pleasant, I must admit. Aggressors, 5-inch move, T6, 3 wounds, 3 plus save. Uh, they have close quarters firepower, which is each time a model in this unit makes a range attack against the closest target, improve our AP by 1. That's great, I love it. Uh, and uh, it's only for range attacks, unfortunately. So considering the fact that they are short range, so Bolt Storm and Frag Storm and Flame Storm, everything is very short ranged, that's a great ability. So Auto Bolt Rifle Golden Gauntlets are three shots each, uh, and we only get, I think we only get one, right? Uh, model, flame, yeah, okay, so uh, three shots per the per guy, and also extra D6 from their backpack. Or without the backpack, D6 plus one shots uh, from the Flamestorm Gauntlet. So they are automatically hitting, ignoring cover, and also your own to wound. I like the Flamestorm Gauntlets. So with here you would get an average 6.5 shots, uh, from which you would hit four times, depending on what you're targeting, if it's your Oath of Moment target or not. And here you would get on average 4.5 shots, and you would hit automatically. So it's... Uh, statistically the same but you ignore cover here which is interesting so okay um <laughs> power fist uh three attacks force to hit eight minus two two so as we expect and uh we can take them up to six in the squad terminator assault squad that's interesting so Thunder Hammers and Twin Lightning Claws. Okay, they, <laughs> they have the Lightning Claws. Uh and Lightning Claws are not gone from the game. Uh the Lightning Claws do 5 attacks, uh, th weapon skill 3 plus, 5 minus 2 damage 1, they are twin linked. Thunder Hammer is the same as everyone else, uh, have the Thunder Hammers. Terminator's Assault, each time this unit ends a charge move, e each enemy unit within engagement range must take a battle shock test. That's powerful, I like it. Uh, they are 2 plus save, 3 wounds, and if you take the shield there are 4 wounds each. Uh, four wounds each, that's not great against damage to weapons, that's just paying extra points. But I guess if you want the Thunder Hammers, you'd still have to take the Storm Shield, so it doesn't really matter. I wonder what the price is going to be. Teleport Homer, at the start of the battle you can set up one Teleport Homer token from this unit, for this unit anywhere in the battlefield. Not in the deployment zone, if you do once per battle, you can target this unit with a rapid ingress stratagem for zero command points. But when resolving the stratagem, you must set the, this unit up within three inches horizontal of the token and not within nine inches of the enemy models. That's strong, really strong, uh, because paying zero command points for redeploying these guys in, I think, in your opponent's movement phase is powerful. And especially if you like do the teleport homer thing properly and set them up behind cover, for example, so they are not visible or at least fully visible, that may be a big problem for your opponent down the line because they will then move five inches or maybe five inches in advance and charge. So I like it. Terminators were always cool and they're still cool. Uh, Terminator squad, the regular one is Fury of the First. They get instead of the uh, battle shock thing so uh, they get to ignore ballistic skill weapon skill modifiers and uh, hit roll modifiers and also each time they target an oath of moment target uh, oath of moment unit the one that you've chosen for this ability you get to hit on plus one so threes for the power fists and threes for the chain fist and twos for power fist and power weapons I love it. Assault cannon, uh, six shots, three to hit, strength six, AP zero, damage one. 
24 inch range uh, cyclone missile launcher is the same pretty much as it was before i like it not bad they got it one plus one strength so now it's strength nine heavy flamer mm, same as it was in the previous edition uh storm waters the same as well okay interesting i am not sure what i would like more the assault terminators or these ones uh every five every uh, one in five guys can take the assault cannon the heavy flamer cyclone missile and trans storm shield mm, okay interesting relic terminators what do they have uh they have fury, fury of the first the same rule uh, and they get access to some other special weapons that the other guys can don't have access to and they also get four boss invulnerable saves like all the terminators um the reaper auto cannon is devastating wounds seven minus one one four shots and sustain hits one so uh, exploding sixes and sixes to wound the mortals uh, plasma blaster okay heavy flamer uh what do, can they take in terms of like every for every five guys one heavy flame and one reaper any number of models can uh, change their power fist to power weapon any number of models can change their power fist to chain fist any number of models can change their combi bolter and power fist to twin lightning claws and the sergeant can take the special guns okay so relic terminators exist but not are not that spectacular and they don't get the teleport homer thingy uh, that I really like from the Assault Squad. Because the Assault Squad can actually assault, <laughs> thanks to that ability. Assault pretty well. Uh, Centurion Assault Squad. Annihilator Protocols. Melee weapons equipped by models in this unit have sustained hits, so exploding sixes do extra two hits. Uh, ability when targeting monster vehicle fortifications. That's strong. They are T7, so like the Alaris Terminators. Four wounds each, again like Alaris. Uh, two plus safe, four inch move, very, very slow. <laughs> Extremely slow, they're so slow. I, I, I hope there will is going to be some way to transport them, because otherwise they're just not going to get anywhere. Uh, maybe like a Land Raider, I guess. That's probably the best way to transport them. Uh, these Centurion Siege Drills are three attacks each, reroll on wounds, a strength 10, AP2, damage 3. Strong. And... Uh, Twin melt again. Okay, that's a twin melt again. Okay, not bad. I like it. Moving on to the shooty devastators. They are the same defensive profile. Essentially, they get rerolls to hit in shooting, or if the target of the attack is on the objective, reroll full hit rolls uh, for them, which is obviously great. Uh, the same profiles. Essentially, the graph cans are. Anti-vehicle 2 plus, the uh, damage 3, wow, 3 shots each. So they are very, a very, very powerful choice against vehicles. Because you're, you're going to be wounding them on 2s, no matter the toughness. So like a monolith, you essentially would be <laughs> uh, strength 28 against the monolith. Uh, 2 plus safe, hope sec, okay. Very, very strong. I wonder what the price is going to be because these guys have been notoriously very expensive in the like 90s, sometimes even more for, for just one guy. Uh, and they're still not that survivable. They can be dealt with relatively quickly with anti tank weapons. Next, uh, the Invictor. Invictor Warsuit. Um, <laughs> his toughness is 8, so not bad uh three plus save 12 wounds uh does he have anything that can help him survive i wonder he has scout eight inch move so no longer infiltrating just for not no longer forward deploying just an eight inch pre-game move uh once per turn in the shooting phase in the opponent's shooting phase when a friendly focus infantry unit within six of this model is selected as the target uh you can shoot at the unit that was targeting that Phobos unit. Mm, okay, not bad, but my problem with this guy is he's still worse toughness than a Rhino. He has less wounds now. <laughs> he's 3 plus save. His ability is arguably worse than it was uh, before because you had going to have much less of a choice in terms of deploying him. Uh, and... Um, He's still not bad in, in, in the fight, he's still not bad in shooting, but he's going to be dying way too quickly, in my humble opinion, unless he's extremely, ex extremely cheap. Uh, Dreadnought, 
Okay, uh, Wisdom of the Ancients Aura. While friendly adeptus starts infantry unit within six of this model, each time a model this unit makes an attack, we roll hit roll of one. Wow, <laughs> that's very cool. And it's the regular Dreadnought. Hmm, I thought they're gonna be gone from the game. Two plus save, t toughness nine. Uh, Dreadnought combat weapon is five attacks, three plus weapon skill, uh, 12 minus two damage three. Okay. Um, okay, uh, and uh, the. Heavy Plasma and Plasma are the same as they were pretty much, yeah, I don't see any difference. Uh, the multi melter is the same, apart from the range change in the strength. Uh, the same as everyone else, I mean. Uh, twin Last Cannon, Twin Linked, one shot only, uh, but you get to reroll the wound roll, 12 minus 3 damage, d6 plus 1. I, hmm, I'm gonna think about what the choice is, what cho which choice is the best now for this guy, because the the choice is not that obvious uh, now, it seems, because Last Cannon is great, however, only getting one shot is not impressive. Multi Melta is better, but the range is very limited, and the Dreadnoughts are very slow, so you're not gonna get to use that much. Mm, okay, uh, we're gonna think about that later. Uh, the... Contempt of Dreadnought gets his 5 plus invulnerable save, which is uh, nice. Uh, 2 plus save, and uh, no minus 1 damage as the other one. Harris Pattern Assault Cannon is 6 shots, 7 minus 1, 1, and Devastating Wounds, like all the Gatling type weapons have. Multi Melter, okay. Uh, and the Dreadnought Combat Weapon is Strength 12. Minus two, two, minus 2 damage 3, just as on the small box dread. Uh, and the both hit on 2, on 3s, sorry. On 3s. And his special ability is, uh, the first time this model is destroyed, removed from the uh, from play without resolving its deadly demise. Then, at the end of the phase, roll 1d6 on 2+, plus, set this model back up on the battlefield as close as possible to where it was destroyed, and not within the engagement range of any enemy units with d6 wounds remaining. Wow! That is crazy. So this the contemptors will essentially get to come back up from the dead. And that's in addition to them being T9, which is like a rhino, so not bad. Uh, not that easy to wound with even anti-tank weapons, not, not being wounded on twos, definitely. Uh, and two plus save, five of the vulnerable save. That is impressive. I like it. And they are movement six unfortunately so they are very slow just like the small box dreads but that's uh, coming back from the dead ability is impressive ironclad dreadnought i wonder uh there is no venerable dreadnought anymore so that 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 type that choice is gone now the dreadnought is just a dreadnought uh ironclad is toughness 10 two plus save which is understandable. He was T8 in 9th edition. Uh, he has Siege Breaker Protocol, so each time he makes an attack against vehicle fortification, he hits on twos and he wounds on twos, I presume, uh, because his weapons are strength 12, AB, 2, damage 3. Uh, and uh, it's either four or five attacks, depending on which you choose. Chain Fists wounds vehicles on threes automatically, so I wonder if anti vehicle 3 plus gets to be into equal 2 plus with this ability. It is interesting. Probably does. Um, and all the small fire guns that he has are also available to him still. We can get them. Okay, uh, interesting. I'm not sure if you're gonna use this guy because against he's very slow, he doesn't do much in shooting and he does have the crazy abilities like the Contemptor uh, or at least like buffing things like the Dreadnought. Redemptor. First thing first, two Eternals, subtract one from damage characteristic, it's still here guys, it's still here. The minus one damage ability that the Redemptor had before is still available, which is amazing. Uh, me, as someone who used the Redemptors the entire uh, entirety of 10th edition, I can attest to the fact that having minus one damage now in 10th edition is going to be massive, especially considering that he, he has two plus save, so essentially the invulnerable save is still there, and uh, toughness 10, uh, so the toughness is good, it's higher than the Rhino, so um, the Rhino is toughness 9, this is toughness 10, so it's even harder to wound him, like multi melt is going to wound him on on fives now even with the re-rolls and stuff it's still not that not that good uh so yeah redemptors are still good the fist obviously is much less impressive now strength 12 ap2 damage 3 uh which 
it's not bad. It's um, it's enough to deal with most things, especially now that uh, damage minus one damage is not so popular. Even Death Guard don't have that, so uh, damage three is strong and five attacks is good. Uh, strength is good, so I'm not complaining about the fist. He has the Onslaught Gatling Cannon, so eight shots, devastating wounds. I love it. Uh, Twin Storm Bolter is still here. The choice between the Frag Storm Grenade Launcher and the Storm Bolter. I wonder what is going to be better in this edition. Probably, I'd say Grenade Launcher because you're gonna get 3.5 shots and you don't care about the Blast now. Mm hmm okay. Plasma Incinerator is still juicy because you get 36 inches of range. I love the fact that they did not cut back the range. Uh, D6 plus one shot, so even more shots than it was. Obviously, Strength 9 is not nearly as impressive as it was before, and we did not expect it to be, but still, AP4, damage 3, Strength 9, and one more shot than it used to be is good. Uh, plus, it's Blast, and Blast is more powerful than it was before, especially when you're targeting uh, big units. Uh, so, not bad. I like it. I like the changes. Icarus Rocket Pod is plus one strength than it was. Eight, strength 8 compared to strength 7 in the previous edition. And I fly 2 plus, so he would uh, wound fly units on 2s. It's great. And uh, an onslaught, Heavy Onslaught Gatling Cannon is also not bad, but I would prefer the Macroplasma Incinerator still. Uh, but the minus one damage, the fact that he still gets that, it's it's crazy. I will probably still keep the Redemptor in top five uh, Space Marine units unless the price they just jack up the price to the uh, incredible heights. He he needs to be very expensive, extremely expensive to um, not justify the minus one damage, two plus save, toughness ten, eight inch move. Great firepower, great uh, close combat. So, Redemptors are still great, and as an owner of three, I must say I'm happy. Let's move on. Uh, the Brutalis, the Redemptor fighty cousin. So, he doesn't have minus one damage, so immediately he's much less impressive. Has same wounds characteristic, same save, same toughness. Uh, same move, actually, so he's not getting a 10-inch move now, which I don't understand, to be honest, why he, they cut back on his movement. He, he, 10 inches is not that fast, and he, you need to justify taking him over the Redemptor. He gets essentially just one extra attack with the his fist. He gets reroll. He, he gets to reroll all his wounds. That's obviously impressive. But would you sacrifice that to all the shooting that you get with the Redemptor and minus one damage? Mm, no. <laughs> Answer is. No. Uh, Brutalis Charge is doing mortals on the charge. Not bad. N I'm not impressed. I don't understand. I, I hope they're going to justify it with the price. Uh, we'll see that soon enough, hopefully. Ballista's Dreadnought is essentially the previous iteration of the box dread uh, that used to have the last cannons. So, last cannons and missile launcher. Um, you get to reroll hit rolls against anything that is not below half strength. Um, each time model range attack targets in you that is not below half strength. Okay, so yeah, you almost always reroll on hits with him. You get two last can shots, two missile shots, that's it. Uh, the same defensive profile as the Redemptor without the minus one damage. I don't know why would you take this guy as well when you have the Redemptor. Unless, again, the price is just crazily bad for the Brutalis. For the uh, Redemptor, regular one. Assault Squad, uh, that's just the Assault guys without the jump packs. Uh, they are the same stat line as the regular Marines. They get a special weapon uh, Chainsword ability. So the uh, Chainswords get either sustained hits, lethal hits or lands. So plus one to wound, sixes to wound, uh, sixes to hit other wound or sixes to hit explode. Uh, you get to choose that in the fight phase. That's nice considering the fact that they all have chainswords and the sergeant can take the study shield and something like a thunder hammer. What else can they take? Um, no, 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 no. For every five units, one eviscerator. Eviscerator is uh, seven minus two, two. Mm, I think it was nerfed slightly. Up to two marines can take special weapons, and uh, assault sergeant assault sergeant can take something extra in addition to the power weapons uh, to the chainsword. Assault squad with jump packs, the same idea. They can do mortals on the charge up to nothing. So uh, essentially, on fours, if you have a ten man squad, you can get uh, 
like five mortal wounds. Uh, it's interesting, nice, uh, and uh, I like it. Three plus safe, toughness four, two wounds. Okay. Plasma pistol, plasma gun, um, mm -hmm, twin lightning claws. Uh, so what can the the same uh, loadout for as for the regular assault squad, obviously, and they don't get unfortunately the extra ability for the chain swords. So the chain sword will will be as is. So four minus one one, four attacks each, which is not bad, but just nothing to write home about. Without oath of moments on the target that they charge, they're not going to do much damage. Uh, next, outriders they are now they can now be. Uh, uh, a single unit with the invader ATV, so it, it can be one invader ATV and up to, oh wow, up to six outriders. Finally, they're not limited to just three guys in the squad. I love it. Uh, that's that's nice because then you're gonna get at least a whole bunch of attacks. Not not terribly good attacks. Uh, four attacks each, four minus one one, and no extra bonuses on the charge or something like that. Maybe like with the lance ability that you can get give them for one command point they can do some damage uh but in any case it's at move 12 uh so minus two to the movement compared to previous edition four wounds each eight on the atv and uh obsec two which i like uh that's that's pleasant because they could have easily had obsec one considering that they are not battle line invader atv is uh can be also taken as a standalone unit one uh one model and uh, he is the same profile as in the Outrider squad. Outrider escort, once per turn you in the opponent's shooting phase, when a friendly mounted unit gets attacked, this unit can essentially shoot at the perpetrator, uh, shoot back at the target that targeted, at the unit that targeted the mounted unit within six of him. And I think it can be himself as well. Uh, after the unit has finished attacks, yeah, it doesn't say that the your friendly unit must be destroyed. So I I presume that you can do that in return if even if you are attacked um, in your opponent's shooting phase one friendly. Okay, that's a nice way to uh, protect yourself from shooting because opponent will know that you will get a free round of of uh, shooting whatever they do unless they destroy the only mounted unit. Um, Bike Squad, Turbo Boost Ability, so the first instance of the first Turbo Boost Ability we see, no one else has that, uh, even the Outriders don't have it, which I find interesting, that the Outriders cannot advance at automatically 6 inches, but the Bike Squad can. Uh, 3 wounds each, as they were before, Toughness 5, as they were before, Movement is also cut back to 12, which is probably understandable con considering that Space Marines can now advance and charge with the uh, Assault Doctrine easily enough. Attack bike is five wounds, so I think it was four wounds before. No, uh, no, no, no. What else? What else? Um, the weapons, everything seems to be the same. Sorry if I missed something, but I don't want us to spend five hours here. We are literally going through all the Space Marine data sheets. So the fact that I'm not uh, five years older now is already a big, <laughs> big. Uh, Achievement. Uh, now the scout bikes, they get to outflank and it means that they can arrive uh, from the strategic reserves even in the opponent's deployment zone, which is a testament to how speedy they are, I guess. Their actual movement is the same as uh, with everyone else. Uh, they have a studded shotgun, bolt pistol, twin bolt gun and combat knife each. Combat knife is three attacks, 401. Uh, the Sergeant can take a bunch of weapons, which is crowding this data sheet mass massively, but uh, he can only take one from that. And also any number of models can take the grenade launcher, which grenade launcher, I guess, is just... Oh, yes, is this thing. So, crack grenade is 9 minus 2 damage D3. Interesting, so, okay, you can have some nice shooting from that squad. Uh, scout bikes, attack bike squad, uh, so these are just up to three attack bikes. Uh, they also have the Outrider Escort rule, which allows them to shoot back. Uh, the, something that shot Adaptus Astartes Mountain Unit within six of them. Uh, multi melter uh, and Heavy Bolter Choice. A multi melter is not bad with them, considering that they are 12 inch move, so it's a 30 inch threat range, worse than it was before, but still not bad. And uh, they are five wounds each, so they get some extra survivability. Uh, suppressors, not bad, uh, but still uh, kind of meh, because uh, they only got plus one to their strength on the auto cannons, uh, and uh, everything else is the same. They still suffer minus one to hit from the moving penalty. 
Uh, accelerator or a cannon? Mm. <laughs> Uh, you get suppression fire rule in your shooting phase after this unit has shot. Select one enemy unit hit by one or more of those attacks made with an accelerator auto cannon. And when a unit is suppressed, so essentially you can do minus one to hit for an enemy unit. That is uh, pleasant. That is powerful, depending on what unit you target. But it depends very much on their price. If they are very cheap, that's a great unit to have just for that ability alone. And the deep strike rule, uh, because you can potentially put them somewhere where your opponent doesn't want them to. So maybe having one unit of suppressors can be useful, which is already a big achievement for these guys. They were they used to be one of the worst units in the entire codex. So Inceptors, uh, they have the Meteoric Descent rule, which I love. It essentially allows them to deploy within three inches horizontally from enemy units, and it does not prevent them from shooting. So you can essentially uh, deploy behind your opponent's back and um, shoot at maybe something like a lone operative model, which uh, is not protected by not going to be protected then by the uh, rule that allows it to be untargetable and the shooting is very impressive so assault bolters are assault pistol sustain hits too so exploding sixes uh do two extra hits they're twin linked so each guy does how many assault bolters does each have uh every model is equipped with one instance of assault bolter so every model it has three shots that reroll all wounds five minus one damage two so assault bolters are now heavy bolters and that's impressive considering that they got the twin link rule and exploding sixes and they are assault so they can advance and shoot and they are pistol so they can be shot even if they are within engagement range of some enemy unit that's that's a very good profile the plasma exterminators are as well assault and pistol and also twin linked uh, but they only get two shots and uh, they are, can be hazardous or not so you can suffer mortals which is much less sorry suffer dead models uh, not mortals mortals you suffer if you die if you uh, disembark from a uh, destroyed transport uh, the plasma still kills you entirely but it's just an extra another roll you're not dying on the re uh, hit rolls of one you're dying on a separate roll that you do after you have shot and uh it's uh, eight minus three three which i love because exterminators are finally the same uh have the same profile as the heavy uh, hell blaster guns used to have hell blaster guns are changed so uh it's it's interesting i love this unit they are they're probably going to be expensive so don't get your hopes up too much, but they are good. Uh, up to six models in the squad. And then we have a whole bunch of varieties of store speeders. We're going to run through them as quickly as possible. So they each have their own special ability. And all the uh, guns that they used to have, they have the same profile, which is Toughness Rhino, 14-inch uh, move. Obviously, they fly, 18 wounds. So one extra wound compared to a Rhino. And OPSEC 3. So the Hail Strike has the ability that allows uh, Adeptus Stardust unit that shoots at the same uh, unit that the hell strike shot at get extra AP which is nice and that's the the uh, storm speeder gets a lot of small arms fire the thunder strike is the one that gets a lot of anti-tank fire but not the melter kind so the lance and the missiles and uh, he uh, can select one enemy unit enemy monster vehicle unit that was hit by one of his attacks and adeptus stories unit gets um, plus one to wound for ranged attacks that target the same enemy unit and uh, hammer strike is select one enemy unit that was hit by one or more attacks made by this unit and that unit doesn't have cover benefits of cover uh, that probably is the weakest one of the three but um, uh, if I were to choose I would probably choose either the hail strike or the thunder strike just by judging judging just by the uh, special abilities uh, all of their weapons were slightly updated to the 10th edition standard so they are a bit better than they used to be lance speeder regular one is t7 14 inch move uh, 3 plus save 6 wounds uh, and uh, very similar to what it used to be obviously with the toughness updated target side it allows you to for blast weapons that are the studies models in your army are equipped with uh, the target an enemy unit that is visible to this model you can select one of the unit that is visible and then blast weapons from adeptus studies units are going to get plus one to hit and also ignore cover so you're going to help some big guns of yours to hit better and uh everything else is pretty much the same uh lens speeder tornado Trafing and enfilade, it's uh, bombing, something that you moved over, 
off. Uh, Land Speeder Typhoon is fire deployed. That's powerful because it allows you to move after you shot. Problem is, you don't get too many shots here, so you only get three heavy bolter shots or two melty melty shots, which are shorter in range, and two shots from the Typhoon missile launcher, the crack variety. Uh, in general, shooting and scooting is, is powerful, however, I'm not sure that is enough to justify it. However, if you have like three land speeder typhoons and you can only take one in the squad, so you can have up to three in the army, uh, and you constantly like uh, shoot them and move back, shoot them and move back behind cover, that can be annoying and would have make your opponent uh, do some crazy maneuvers to try to stop that. Hellblaster Squad, uh, they have a nice rule called for the chapter, so essentially whenever they die, they get to shoot on the 3+, plus after they die. So the old banner rule from the 9th edition, or 8th edition, and uh, they uh, do that even if they die from their own hazardous rule. Uh, so they are essentially making us believe that Hellblasters are not that bad anymore. All their plasma incinerators were baked into one data sheet, just like the bolt rifles, so they're now just 7 minus 2, 1, so their AP went down massively and uh, they only are AP3 with overcharge, they used to be AP4, well not massively I guess, just like everyone else. Assault heavy so they can advance and, char and, and shoot and they can uh, get plus one to hit if they stay stationary and uh, their hazardous profile is plus one AP, plus one strength and plus one damage uh, and their plus one damage is damage two. Not bad, uh, I would love to see something extra for their firepower to be honest because I'm not sure if they're going to be worth the points. They used to be notoriously expensive, like 30 or 33 points in 9th edition. We'll see what they're going to be in 10th. Uh, the Eliminators are great. The Bolt Rifles are now damage 3. Uh, they are. Uh, they still have the Shoot and Scoot ability from the Sergeant. If he has any, the Bolt Carabine, so you're essentially sacrificing one sniper shot for an ability to shoot, to move after you shoot. Uh, mark the target each time you need to remain stationary until the start of the next movement phase. Ranged weapons have devastating wounds, so base you just have precision on the sniper rifle, so you can target characters, but if you stay stationary, you also hit on twos and you get devastating wounds, so uh, damage three on a wound roll of six plus would become three mortal wounds. And that's obviously strong and powerful, but you have to roll that six. Uh, they have infiltrators and stealth, so they don't get the crazy one up save, zero up save that they used to have before. They just get three plus save and minus one to hit, and they can de deploy whenever they wherever they want to. Uh, and last fusel is nine minus three damage d6, uh, so kind of like the same pretty much as it was before. I would argue that now in the current game, the precision rule would be more important. Eradicators, they are interesting because their guns are just one shot each. They don't get double shoot anymore. However, what they get is full rerolls for hit rolls, wound rolls and damage rolls against monsters and vehicles. And that is crazy because um, their shooting essentially becomes extremely efficient. First of all, you don't have to shoot them in the target of your oath of moments. So you now can re can deploy them like from strategic reserves and just make sure that something definitely gets a lot of damage put into it. You don't have to waste any like command points or any stratagems on them. They're just gonna do their job properly. And yes, it's only gonna be like f a six or something shots, depending on what you give them. If you have multi melt in the squad, which probably is worth it at that point, uh, you will have like maximum seven shots from them however uh, if you are close enough you're gonna get melt a rule and uh, they're gonna do a lot of damage with full rerolls for everything so the damage d6 is not that awful anymore and they are like gravis three wounds tf and six five inch move and uh, what else? Devastator Squad. The Grav Cannon, as we've already seen, is extremely good against vehicles. Missile Launcher, not bad as well. Uh, I like the range on it. Uh, Armorium Charm is once per battle, making, after making a hit roll for a model in this unit, you can change that to hit roll of six. Um, so that can be a nice interaction with some rules. Uh, modified hit roll of six, so you cannot make it like a devastating wound or something, but. Okay, uh, each time this unit remains stationary until the start of the next moment phase, uh, they ignore cover signal, which is nice and uh, can be helpful against some armies that get to have cover for their entire army or something like a very important squad. I'm really impressed by the graph cans, to be honest. I did not expect that. And uh, they used to be very good in 
in eighth edition. I think there was like a stratagem for them to get them extra, uh, get them to reroll wounds and something else. Now they are very good again. So the guys that had the devastators with Gareth Cannons are probably very very happy now. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Um, mm, Desolation Squad, their big uh, rocket of doom is uh, no longer so scary because of the AP and not damage D3 plus 3. And I like it because it used to be too crazy. Uh, the cast and launcher is, I think, the same. 401. I think it used to be AP1. D3 shots. And um, Vanguard launcher on the sergeant is uh, 2 plus to hit. D6 shot, 7 minus 1 damage 2. Targeted optics, uh, if they remain stationary, they ignore cover and ignore all penalties to hit rolls when firing with indirect fire weapons against the targets that are not visible to them. Cool. Interesting. Uh, Obsec 1, 3 plus save. Nothing major on their defensive stats. Uh, Thunderfire Cannon, uh, Tremor Shells, the same rule as we've seen in multiple instances in other codexes, so it's subtract 2 from move, charge, advance. For an infantry unit, if it's if it, get, it gets hit by the attacks from that Thunderfire Cannon. And the fine Thunderfire Cannon itself is not bad. It's D6 plus 4 shots, 501. Um, gunner server arms, so it can fight reasonably well for itself. But the main thing is that it can slow down an important infantry unit. That's, that's important, and you might want to have at least one of these in your army just for that ability alone. Um, Next, the fire strikes or turrets can fire overwatch, so can fire at whatever unit comes within range um, of its guns in the movement phase, opponent's movement phase on the four plus, hits on the four plus instead of sixes uh, when resolving that strategy. And it can only be one or two in the squad, so not that crazy dangerous, but not bad considering that you get. Now damage 3 on the uh, auto cannons and they're twin linked, so each of them is going to do 3 shots, so uh, 6 shots per full squad of 2 server turrets. And, uh, or you can do last talents, which are now 36 inches of range, just one less shot, but you get damage uh, d6 plus 1, AP 3, strength 10. So I, I assume the last talent is going to be severely more expensive. Otherwise, I would often take, always take the last ten over the auto cannon. Um, next, hunter. Uh, the hunter is a movement nine, unlike the uh, like whirlwinds and uh, the predators, which are movement ten. Uh, the hunter can uh, hit monsters and vehicles on twos, and it doesn't say here that it only can hit uh, flying monsters and vehicles on twos. So any monster vehicle gets hit on twos. Um, that's Nice. It has anti-fly on the launcher, which is one shot, 10 minus 3, d6 plus 2. So a good shot, devastating wounds ability also, and anti-fly 3 plus. So if you're shooting on something that flies, that's going to do a whole bunch of damage. A lot of damage. As far as I remember, anti-weapons, that counts as a critical hit. So devastating wounds would do a, a load of uh, mortal wounds in instead of the damage, straight up. So... That is powerful. Uh, the Stalker, um, not bad. So each time you target this model with the Overwatch strategy, you can shoot at up to three additional enemy units within 24, but only hitting on sixes. Uh, and those units must be fly. So an buff for the Overwatch strategy. And the guns are anti-fly 2+, plus, so they won't fly things on twos. Uh, threes to hit, seven minus one damage two, and you get six shots. Okay, uh, not a bad combination, however, how often would you get to shoot at fly things? That is the biggest question. So if in the meta there are going to be a lot of fly stuff, then okay, that's that's important. That may be important. Uh, whirlwind uh, can pin a unit, so an infantry unit must take a battle shock test after getting hit by the Whirlwind. Uh, that is good, obviously, uh, turning off OPSEC on a key unit like in the back line of your opponent could can be devastating potentially, especially if they have no one to send on that unit and you can just um, get rid of one of their, of their primary scoring units. 
especially on like a home objective that is important uh vengeance launcher is the only launcher you're gonna have now <laughs> so they don't you don't have a choice now and it's d6 plus three shots uh eight minus two two so good stat line uh indirect fire obviously and uh i like it and whirlwind is, is not bad it's it's a good tactical choice i like it uh the Predator Destructor, so what does it do? Each time this model makes a range attack that targets an infantry unit, improve the armor penetration characteristic of that attack by one. Okay, so the infantry are screwed if they are getting targeted by this guy, and his auto cannon is 9 minus 1 damage 3. So it, almost as it used to be, but just higher strength. Four shots, rapid fire two. So if you're hitting something that is closer, you get in two extra shots. And um, last cannon. Obviously, sponsons, last can sponsons, and uh, toughness 10, so like the dreadnoughts. Not bad, but still, like if you're gonna choose now between the Redemptor and the Predator, I'm not still not sure that you want to choose the tank over the Redemptor because uh, you get in the same toughness, you get in the worst save, which is important. You get in, I think, less wounds, one less wound, and you're not getting minus one damage. Yes, your shooting is slightly better, but not that much better hmm. okay the price is going to show us everything we're still in the dark in that sense annihilator um that's the last cannon option for the predator the last cannons are 14 minus 3 damage d6 plus 1 so i think it's a higher strength than the god hammer last cannons or the regular last cannons which are 12 yeah so they're slightly better and they're gonna wound t7 on twos and they're gonna wound a monolith on fours and that's impressive nowadays. <laughs> uh, the uh, stat line is the same. Moving on. Uh, gladiators. So the gladiators also have each their own special ability, which I like. Uh, the lancer is the one that gets uh, the like precise anti-tank shots uh, with its uh, laser destroyer thing, which is two shots, 14 minus 4, d6 plus 3. Great, great profile. I cannot say anything bad about it. And it rerolls each time you select this model to shoot you can reroll one hit roll one wound roll and one damage roll so it's an extremely reliable profile as well so that tank will be able to pick on a particular enemy unit be it a monster vehicle or anything and do a lot of damage to it especially if they don't have an invulnerable safe which not all things in the game nowadays have invulnerable saves gladiator reaper so um what does this thing do it gets sustained hits against infantry units and that's what you want to shoot at with that that much daca which is uh 12 shots 601 and that's devastating wounds and twin links so you're wounding toughness three things on twos and re-rolling wounds and toughness four and toughness five infantry also on threes uh and re-roll wounds and those sixes do mortals in instead of the damage so yeah, a lot of DECA on this thing, and I like the Reaper, I really liked it before, and uh, getting Exploding Sixes do extra two hits for all the firepower that you get, all these shots, that's impressive. Uh, very, very interesting tank. Uh, the Valiant is gets to reroll, gets to hit on twos against monsters and vehicles. Uh, yes closest eligible monster vehicle and uh the twin last talent is 10 minus 3d6 plus one two shots twin linked and um same stat profile and the vindicator that one I'm, I'm really impressed about because he is two plus save toughness 11 so he's more tougher than all the other vehicles that we looked at before uh and uh he gets to shoot into engagement range and doesn't suffer any penalties for it so he cannot be tied down essentially and his demolisher cannon is just badass d6 plus three shots uh 14 minus three damage d6 hitting on threes that is great crazy and that's impressive and two plus safe is good so i really like the vindicator uh the land raider uh we already seen this guy so nothing new uh two plus safe toughness 12 so he's tougher than vindicator but the Vindicator is still not bad for such a small vehicle, relatively. Assault ramp, uh, units that disembark from the Land Raider can um, charge after disembarking. So that's a perfect platform to transport, like, sm uh, slow Centurions, for example. The Godhammer last can is 12 minus 3d6 plus 1. So you get 4 shots per Land Raider. Uh, yes, 
yeah, two shots, uh, sorry, four shots per land raider. And uh, Crusader is the same. You just get all the DECA versions of shots, uh, no special abilities on him. Uh, and the obviously the Twin Assault Cannon gets Devastating Wounds and Twin Linked, so nothing surprising here. Uh, the uh, transport capacity is 16 for the Crusader and uh, 14 for the Redeemer. Redeemer's uh, Flamers are D6 plus 3 shots, um, seven, seven, 6 minus 2, 2, and he gets two of them. So it's 2D6 plus 6. A lot of shots. I like the Flamestorm flame Cannon. It's impressive. And uh, you get all the other guns as well. Interesting choice. I still think that the regular basic land radio is still a bit better. Uh, because of the limitation on the range on the Flamestorm cannons, but not bad. Uh, and like using Overwatch stratagem on the Land Raider Redeemer would be crazy good because he would hit with everything automatically. Repulsor, uh, he gets the emergency combat embarkation, so once per turn in your opponent's charge phase, after an enemy unit has selected targets for its charge, but before it makes a charge move, you can select one and that was the status unit from your army. Uh, that was selected as a charge, provided that the unit is not within engagement range and every model is within three, you can embark within this transport. So you can run away into the repulsor if you get charged, and that's that's interesting. I cannot say that it's very, very good, considering that you only get to do that if you are charged, so it doesn't save you from getting sh shot, for example, uh, at, but not bad. And Heavy Onslaught Gatling Cannon is the same as on the Redemptor. Uh, transport capacity 12, and uh, it doesn't seem to have... Uh, the, the, all the small guns have been consolidated into this repulsor defensive array. We'll see the same thing on the Executioner, as you can see, just less shots. And the Executioner has uh, the plus one to hit ability uh, when it targets a unit that is below half strength. So he finishes things off, that's what he's good at. And his laser destroyer is uh, two shots, 16 minus four damage, D6 plus four, so a very good gun. And the Macroplasma Incinerator is the same as on the Redemptor. Uh, the other shots are all here, nothing too spectacular about them. Uh, and his movement 10, toughness 12, 3 plus save, and he cannot fly, uh, unfortunately, which is annoying. Uh, Rhino, we've already seen that one, he self-repairs again, firing deck 2, so two guys can shoot out of si outside, of, outside, sorry, from the inside out of the Rhino. Uh, to OPSEC 2, Razorback can fire support, so in your shooting phase, after this model has shot, select one enemy that was hit by the shooting from the Razorback, and the friendly models that disembark from this transport make an, can make an attack against that unit, and they will reroll wounds against that unit. So if you have, uh, for example, Devastators inside Razorbacks, so you have three Razorbacks, they shoot at some unit, and then three squads of Grav, for example, open up against the same unit, and they will be rerolling all their wound rolls against that unit. So they incentivize us to use Razorbacks for fire support units, uh, which is interesting. And all the guns here, uh, the Twin Assault Cannon is only six shots, 601, Twin Link Devastating Wounds, uh, and that's the one you don't get in the Razorback box you have to buy it from forge world twin heavy bolter is three shots five minus one damage two so that's where they compensate for the lack of shots they double up on the damage and you get sustained hits and twin linked as well so exploding six as well and twin linked rule for the tw twin last cannon which only does one shot so what less can seems to be the probably the worst choice here I, it feels at least like it impulsor uh you get to add uh, Disembark after advancing, and uh, units that do so count as having made a normal move and cannot declare a charge that turn. Interesting. So it's good for something like Hell Blasters, I guess, uh, probably, <laughs> but um, not that impressive. Shield Dome is still 5 plus invulnerable save. Orbital Comms Array allows you to, uh, on a 5 plus, gain back one command point that you spent on an Adeptus Astartes unit. Uh, missile Array is very much, very similar to what it was. 12-inch um, move, you still can fly, and Toughness nine, toughness Rhino, so, okay. Uh, moving on to the Drop Pod. Drop Pod Assault, the model can start in the battle and reserves, but neither 
uh, must start in reserves, but neither it nor any units embarked within are counted towards any limit placed on the maximum number of reserves units. Uh, can be set up in the reinforcement step of the first, second, or third movement phase, regardless of any mission rules. Units embarked within uh, must immediately disembark and uh, more than nine inches away after this model setup. No units can embark within it. Okay, uh, cool. So toughness six, toughness seven, sorry, eight wounds. I think it's even less wounds than it was before, but I'm not sure. And uh, he has the deep strike and can house 10 infantry units, he cannot transport anything special. Land speed or storm, uh, it, each time a unit disembarks from this model after it has moved and made normal move, this unit is still eligible to declare a charge this turn. Okay, so <laughs> they, the scouts can actually uh, move 14 and it disembark 3 and then charge outside of it. And it can only transport scout squad, scout snipers, or sergeant Italian and sergeant Italian models. Okay, interesting. Cerberus launcher. Uh, Stormhawk interceptor. Mm, okay, he can do well against fly things. He's toughness rhino, 10 wounds, OPSEC 0, because he's a flyer. Um, the Storm Talon has the strength and round ability, so he retains his plus 2 to hit. Uh, that he had, I think, in the 8th edition. Uh, in ninth edition, I think they got rid of it. So he does well against targets on the ground, but he's very, very easy to kill. He's even easier to kill than the uh, Storm Hawk. So he's T8, 10 wounds, 3 plus save, nothing else protecting him, apart from the fact that he's a flyer. Uh, yeah sad. Uh, the Storm Raven gunship surprisingly has minus one damage, so he's like a flying dreadnought, flying redemptor, to be precise, because not all dreadnoughts now get minus one damage. I wonder if uh, which Custodius dreadnoughts will get minus one damage. Probably mm, Telemon, I guess. If I were to guess, I would say Telemon. Uh, T, uh, toughness 10, 3 plus save, 14 wounds, uh -huh, 12 inch, 20 inches of movement, armored hull, mm -hmm. And all the guns in the world you can take on him, so he can do a lot of shooting. Uh, my problem with him is that he, he must start as all the aircraft outside, so off the battlefield. And um, that's kind of annoying. But he has a lot of transport capacity and the models now are not dying as, as um, awfully <laughs> after the flyer has been shot down. So... Maybe you can use it, because with minus on damage, 14 wounds, toughness 10, he's not that easy to kill. We'll see about the price. If he, if the price is not extremely high, he can actually be a good model. Because with Oath of Moment, rerolling all the hit rolls and all the wound rolls against a particular target, mm, it can be a good choice. So, Hammerfall Bunker is a uh, fortification, so... Uh, models in that unit do not need to take desperate escape tests due to falling back by the shock, except for those that will move over. Okay, so movement zero. Obviously, yeah, it cannot move anywhere. Uh, ceramide coverage time range attack is located to a model if that model is not fully visible to every model in that attacking unit before because of its fortification. This model has the benefit of cover. Okay, so it's a bit harder to kill with two plus save, 14 wounds, toughness 12. So he's toughness land raider. Not that easy to kill anymore. Uh, and the uh, Hammerfall Missile Launcher Supercrack is 10 minus 2 damage, D6 plus 1, 2 shots, and heavy fall, Hammerfall Heavy Bolt Array, and defensive array ability each time. Okay, so set up, and the normal move. Essentially, yeah, whenever something uh, pops up in range of this guy and like, line of sight, he can shoot at this thing, and the bear can shoot up to 4 times in this way in your opponent's movement phase. Interesting, interesting. The fact that he cannot control objectives is what annoys me the most. Uh, but other than that, it's a cool, it's a cool model. Uh, and that was Armory, and that is it. So other uh, than that, these are just characters. Uh, we're probably gonna skip them because they are unique to specific chapters. So nothing. I, I'm sure there is something good about them, but this video is too long anyway already, and we've already seen something like. Gilliman. So thank you for watching guys. I hope this video was not too long uh, and I hope you enjoyed it and I will definitely make some videos about which units are the best after we learn the prices because that's going to impact the decision here a lot.